welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So we had our London UK Fountain Pen Club meetup on Saturday the 1st of June and these were some of the pens that I took with me to the pen club. Uh, you can see here there are some Viscontis. Uh, I took three of my Visconti operas and we have there the Visconti Opera Elements Dark Amber, the Opera Deep Blue Ocean, the Opera Club Cherry Blossom. We also have an Opera Metal True Black, an Opera Master, and that's the clear demo. Also the Visconti Opera Silver Dust, the Homo Sapiens Evolution, the Homo Sapiens Elegance, the Visconti Magma Manhattan, and then a couple of Van Goghs, which are the Starry Night and the Pollard Willows, and also a Visconti Divina Elegance in the brown. I also took some other pens with me, and you can see them here as well. I took a Pelican M1000. I took a couple of my Omas Paragons in the Scarlet Red and the uh, Blue Royale. A Conway Stewart Churchill in the bracket green, an Aurora 88 large, a Pilot Custom 823 with an FA nib, the Leonardo Officina Italiana Momento Zero in the horn, a Visconti Race Tech, an Omas Arte Italiana Paragon Grande, a Molteni Modello 55S in the Royal Blue Luchens and a couple of other Omars here, and these are in the wild celluloid. Uh, one is a rollable and one is a fountain pen. And here you can see the Pelican M1000 that, that I took with me, and this comes with a very large number eight size nib. I actually do like the size of the Pelican M1000, and I do also like the, the number eight size nib as well. I find it to be very, very bouncy and springy compared to the Pelican M800 nibs and 600s and 400s where they are actually pretty rigid nibs and you really don't get a lot of flex out of those. But this pen I have recently sold and that's going to a new home. I also brought my Conway Stewart Churchill here and this is another pen that I'm looking to sell as well. I'm looking to sell a number of pens out of my collection and you may have seen this on my website uh, and also on my Instagram and there's nothing wrong with these pens it's just that I have so many pens and I just can't write with all of them now so I'm really looking to, to downsize on some of the pens that I have and this is one of them. It's a really lovely pen it writes really well, but I have a couple of other Conway Stewart Churchills. I have the Red Stardust and the Blue Stardust, and I tend to like those a little bit more. And then I have the Omas Paragon, and this is the Scarlet Red, and this is another pen that I'm also looking to sell as well. Again, nothing wrong with the pen. It's a beautiful pen, and, and this Scarlet Red celluloid that Omas used is absolutely stunning, and it writes really well. But it's just, again, another pen that... I, I have other Omas pens that I tend to write with more and I tend to gravitate more towards. So so this is another pen that, that I'm actually looking to sell. But as you can see here, it has a lovely medium Omas nib and uh, it really does write well. And then also I have the Omas Paragon Blue Royale and this is another pen that, that I have recently sold and hopefully that's going to a new home as well. And you can see the two pens side by side here. And you can see how the Scarlet Red versus the Blue Royale celluloid really does look lovely together. It has a, an Omos fine nib. And that also writes quite nicely as well. Modelo 55S in the Royal Blue Luchens material. And this really it has become one of my favorite writers i really really do love how this writes so th this is very quickly becoming one of the pens in my collection that i will probably never sell but at least at the moment anyway because this for me not only do i like the design and i like the look of the pen i like the size the weight and how it writes which is probably more important to me than than everything else it's it's the writing experience and this actually comes with a Bok medium nib, but uh, it really does write well. And then I have an Aurora 88 large, and this one is is an interesting one. It's, it's a pen that I bought because I wanted to 
experience Aurora and I hadn't had any Aurora pens and, and I didn't know anybody that, that had Aurora pens that, that I could try. So I bought this a couple of years ago. It is a really nice pen. It does write very well. The tines on this nib are really, really long. Uh, it's a little bit more of a rigid nib than a, than a flex nib, but it does write very well. But again, it's just one of these pens where I'm not normally into black pens. So I, I do have a lot of black pens, but they have to really write well and 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 have other characteristics as well. And the, the Aurora, although it does write well for me, it's more of a fine writing nib and as you probably know by now I tend to prefer mediums and broads and stubs so for me it's just another pen that I'm actually letting go in my collection and this is Pilot Custom 823 FA and and a few friends have said to me why why are you selling an 823 FA well I actually have three of them I, I have one in the clear or as in Japan, they, they tend to call it no colour. Um, I have one in the amber, and I have one in the smoke black. And So I have this one in the smoke black. They all have FA nibs on them. And I think at some point I'd like to actually pick one up just with a regular broad nib. But uh, for the time being, I've decided that I'm going to keep two of them, but I'm going to let one go. So I'm going to let the, the smoke black version go. But you can see the FA nib here, it's actually a a really nice nib it's actually a flex nib uh, it's probably as close as you will get to a modern flex nib um, it, it does take a little bit more pressure to apply than say a vintage nib uh, it's a gold nib as well but it really really does write nice and then I took along my Omas Arte Italiana and this is the Paragon Grande and uh, I've had this nib worked on recently uh, it was clicking a little bit and it was just putting me off writing with it so I had that fixed and now it writes perfectly so uh, that that is a really really lovely writer and I do love these Omas nibs the, the Omas nibs are beautiful nibs to write with I also had my Visconti Race Tech, which is a quite an interesting pen. It's it's made of carbon fiber, uh, but it does have this sort of a break disc type effect on the bridge clip. It has a checkered flag around the cap band, and it also comes with a chromium 18 nib, which is a tubular nib or steel nib. Uh, and a lot of people tend not to like that, but um, uh, I actually find it writes very well. Uh, it, it is a stiff nib because it's a steel nib. But uh, again, this is another pen that I'm looking to, to let go in my collection. So if you want any of the pens I'm looking to let go, just drop me a message. And then a little while ago, I picked up this Omas. Uh, and this is the Wild in the Milord. And this is a really nice pattern. I do like it. Now... For anyone that doesn't like rollables, I'm sorry to disappoint, it is a rollable, but it's a pattern that I really like. So I decided to get that and I picked it up for a really good price. I also got to try this pen out from Gary and this is a pen and it's called the Edge. And it's actually quite a, a strange pen. Uh, it feels like it's made of like a, a 3D printed type plastic. It's a very textured plastic and you have to pull it off and it has a Lamy style nib on it but the section is actually quite a sort of really irregular shape and for me like it has an Iridium point nib on it uh, it actually wrote okay um, but it, it kind of reminded me of, of sort of really back in the 80s and 90s of the um, uh, F-19 stealth fighter or the F-117A and then I also got to try out a Parker 51, and I really do like the Parker 51s. If you don't know, my first ever fountain pen was, or almost my first, I believe, it's probably my second or third, I had a Parker 51. I think Gary brought this uh, Lamy accent with him, and it's actually a really nice pen. Uh, I'm not too sort of keen on the design of the pen. I do like the sort of, I think it's Briarwood uh, sort of 
insert that you can or overlay that you can fit into the pen there in the middle and you can remove it and you can swap it out with other uh, d different colors and, and that but uh, I do like the nib on this it's a 14 carat medium nib and I have to admit these Lamy gold nibs really really do write well I've tried a number of medium nibs and I've tried also the broad nibs as well and every every Lamy gold nib has written very smooth very wet and just how i like them so i think at some point i probably will pick up a lamy with a gold nib at some point and as i mentioned earlier i brought along my visconti divina and this is the elegance in the brown and this really is a stunning material uh, a lot of photos really doesn't do this pen justice because a lot of photos will show it almost like a black, uh, a very dark brown or black. But when you get it under the light, you actually get to see a lot of this chatoyance going on here in the body and in the cap. And you can just see there the amount of chatoyance. And this comes with a, a 23 cap palladium nib and it's a medium nib. And again, it just writes very well. But again, that's another pen that I'm looking to let go for my collection i have a number of other divinas i have the desert springs i have the the typhoon blue and i have the elegance in the green and i tend to use those a lot more and then i brought some van goes with me and this is my pollard willows and again this is another pen that i'm looking to sell as well uh this has a really striking pattern on it uh it comes with a steel nib a number five size nib uh, for me like it's a cartridge converter um, it's small enough in the hand and it's it's also great when when posted as well if you post the cap it's very lightweight it's a really good pen but I don't know the the steel nibs with Visconti just don't do much for me so I bought this along with my Starry Night early on and this really is is just sort of i've kept it in my collection because i like the patterns and that but i just don't write with it so again this is a pen that i'm looking to let go of uh, and likewise this visconti magma manhattan uh, this actually comes with a, a number five nib but it's a 23 carat palladium nib and this is a very bouncy nib and it has a really lovely orange swirl pattern going on and this is the same material that Omas have used on a number of their pens as well and Visconti was able to to get that same material and you can see that it really is a lovely orange pattern and you can see the 23 cap palladium medium nib there and another pen that I'm looking to to get rid of that I took with me as well is the Visconti Homo Sapiens Evolution and this is a really lovely pen I love how the cap the swirls on the cap uh, and the the filling knob it's a power vac the only downside with this is it has the uh, skeleton nib and that is effectively a steel nib but it writes very smooth very wet and it's a power vac filler as well and then there's my lovely Visconti Opera Elements Dark Amber. And this really is a stunning material. Uh, some people call it a candy cane or or even the the um, uh, the, the signage outside of a gent's uh, sort of barber shop or hairdressing shop. Uh, it's that kind of material. But it really is a lovely. It's a cracked ice effect with this dark amber with this white. And it really stands out well. And this comes also with a 23 cap palladium medium nib. So I took that along for people to try out. Or the Visconti Opera Club Deep Blue Ocean. And this is, again, a lovely blue cracked ice effect that's going on there. Uh, and that comes with a 23 cap palladium nib. And that really is, again, an, uh, another good writer. But it's just another one of these pens I just don't write with enough. And... With 170 pens in my collection, I just I can't write with all of them, and and I'm I'm not a collector. I'm a writer of my pens, so I have decided that it is time to try and slim down some of my collection a little bit. I also got to try out this pen from Rupert, and this was a Mont Blanc. It's a Heritage 1912, and this really is a lovely pen. It came with a broad nib, and it's a safety pen. 
So when you unscrew the cap, there's no nib there. There's just a gaping hole. But then what you do is you twist the, the end cap and then the nib pops out. And it really is a nice writer. Um, it's a, a small nib, but it didn't disappoint. And it really wrote very well. I also took along another sort of fairly new acquisition, which is an Omos Milord, again in the wild side. Um, this has a lot more white in it, and this is a fountain pen version. And again, this is a beautiful nib. Uh, it's a medium nib. It's very wet. Uh, has a little bit of bounce to the nib as well. And again, these Omos nibs really do write well. If you have a chance of picking up an Omos, do try and pick up one and, and try one because they do write very well. And then I got to try again. This is a pen that Gary has, and this is a Tatcha Covenant. And this really is a weird pen. And I thought I'd take another look at it here because I think my previous video I did at the UK South Pen Club, uh, the lighting wasn't that great, but you can see this swirly pattern that's going on in here. Uh, very much like a, a coffee or a mocha. Um, it, it's really uh, an interesting material. I'm not a fan of this really long cap though. I, I, although I, I like having, I like seeing all of that material there in the cap. I think it's a little bit wasted, but uh, this is the design that Hatcher came up with, and a lot of people do seem to like this for some reason or another. And then another pen also that I got to try uh, at the last pen club, the UK South pen club, was the Garcia Deschach Durga. Uh, and this is a, a pen that, that Gary has. And again, I, I really wanted to show the light off a little bit better here. And you can see it here in these photos. The, the wood sort of effect that's going on here is really, really stunning. There's chatoyance going on there as well the pen is absolutely gorgeous and it comes with a standard bock nib and i believe that's a fine nib as well but and you can see it in my hand here you can't post the cap because the body is the same size of the cap but you can see here in the sides of my hand that you don't need to post that cap and you can see here this this parker that, that gary brought along this really is a nice material. I do love this this sort of pattern that's going on here and the, the glossy black enamel over that pattern. Uh, it's almost like a guilloche sort of. It really is a beautiful pen. And then Rupert brought along a Waterman Karen and we were having a bit of a discussion here because we sort of, Rupert and myself thought that this was a red pen and I would say it was more of a metallic a metallic red. Gary says it's more of a pink pen. What do you guys think? Uh, I think it does change a little bit on some of the photos here, but personally, I think it's more of a red than a pink. Uh, I guess you could call it a hot pink, maybe, but I would say it's got more reddish undertones in it than than pink. But I do like the Karens. I have a Karen in the the black with a gold trim. Uh, I have it in a medium nib, and I do find that that writes very well. And and so did Rupert's pen as well. So that was it. That was our London, UK Fountain Pen Club for June 2019. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye-bye.